So till now we have seen two different algorithms beyond the brute force which work on strings. So we saw the boyer mohr algorithm which uses the brute force idea with some heuristics for taking care of mismatches and skips over some letters. And then we saw the rabin karp algorithm which does a completely different thing. It converts the whole string into a number and then relies on numeric comparisons rather than string comparisons. So let us go back now to string based comparison. So let us deviate back from that numeric comparison to string based comparison. So what we said at the beginning was that in a traditional brute force or boyer mohr kind of thing, we start with our text and for every starting position we look at the segment or the slice which is the length of our pattern and try to match it usually going from right to left. So boyer mohr tells us that when we are doing this matching, when we find mismatches we can be clever. So if the position where we find a mismatch does not appear in our pattern, we can skip beyond that position. So we can update i to i plus j plus 1. And if it does appear in my string, then I can pre-compute this last of c and shift it so that the position where it appears in my string aligns with the position in the text. So this could allow again to skip over some useless matches. But though this heuristic works very well in practice as we said, it does not change the worst case from that of the brute force algorithm which is order n times m because we could have this trivial pattern where the same letter occurs repeatedly in my text and the pattern is just a small variation with 1 b before m minus 1 is. So now we will try to see if we can beat this worst case and get something which is proportional to n. So in the boyer mohr algorithm, what we are trying to do is learn from mismatches. So whenever we see a mismatch, we accelerate the search by pushing our index forward. The other approach which is what we are going to use in the new algorithm is to remember how much we have matched and see if we can update that intelligently. So can we intelligently reuse partial matches that we have seen so far. So let us look at an example. So supposing we are trying to search for this is my text right on top and this is my pattern. So I am searching from the left. So when I reach this a, B, A, B and I have not yet found a mismatch in my text, I have implicitly found a prefix of my pattern in the text so far. So that is the letters A, B, A, B in orange in my pattern. So we have a prefix that we have matched so far, right? And this corresponds to, in general, a suffix of what I have seen in the text because the position of this text right now is at the beginning, but it could be in the middle. So if I am in the middle of the text, then the part that I have matched in my pattern will not be the entire text, it will be the last few letters in the text. So the suffix, right? So the suffix is when I take a word and I take something from here onwards. So this is a suffix, right? And a prefix is from the beginning up to a point. So there is a prefix of the pattern which is a suffix of the text, right? So the last few letters in my text match the first few letters in my pattern. This is what we generally have as the information that we get when we are proceeding in a block without finding a mismatch. Right? So now the question is what happens when we extend the search? So the good case is that the next letter that I am looking for in this block matches the next letter in my pattern. So earlier I had A, B, A, B and the next letter here is A right? and this matches the next letter here. So the prefix that I have matched grows from AB, AB to AB, AB, A. So this is good. But now what will happen next is that I will find a mismatch because in my text I see a B but my pattern requires me to see a C. So if I were doing something like boyer mohr or a brute force, at this point I will now shift my entire focus and restart a scan from scratch. Right? I will shift to a new block. I might shift to a different position in that text, but I will essentially start scanning my pattern with zero information about any match. Instead, what we can observe is that if we are at this position, right, we still have a match. right? So there is still some part of the text we have seen, so we can believe that we have matched AB, AB even though we failed in our last attempt to extend that original pattern to C. Right? So I will reset 
this longest match. So now we are in the situation where my text has come up to here. So notice now that I have a suffix of my text which matches a prefix of my pattern. So now if I proceed, I will see that the next letter matches this, the next letter matches this and I will report success without having to go back, right. So this is the main message here is that if we can remember somehow, right, how much of the pattern match remains valid, then I can believe that I have actually matched that much. So instead of restarting from here and going forward, which is what I would do, I can already kind of you know, internalize the fact that I have matched four characters without scanning them and proceed from the fifth character on it, right. So this is what we are trying to do. So how do we do this reset? Well, we are going to do it by pre-computing. So just like in the Boyer-Moore algorithm, we learned how to align letters by doing this last computation. So here we are going to see if I find a mismatch and if my current pattern was so much, then what is the remaining pattern which continues to match after this, okay. So that is what we have to calculate now. So we will use a graph of a special kind to do this pre-computation. So let us assume that my pattern has length m as usual. So I will have a graph in which I construct m plus 1 nodes, 0, 1 up to m. So let us assume that m is uh, 6, so we are doing it with our example a, b, a, b, a, c, the same example as we had before. So this is length 6, so I will create 7 nodes 0 to 6, right. Now what I will do is I will construct edges. So the edge will tell me how much the match has extended. So the interpretation of node i is that I have the sequence I have seen so far matches up to position i. So if I have seen an A, so remember that my pattern is A, B, A, B, A, C. So if I have seen an A starting with the empty string, then I have matched up to position 1. So I go from 0 to 1 in my graph, right. After I see an A, if I see a B, then I have matched two positions, so I go forward. So as long as I do correct matches, I keep going forward, right. So let us continue and finish a few more edges. So A to B takes me from 0 to 1, uh, a B, sorry, a, uh, from Initially an A takes me from 0 to 1, after that a B takes me from 1 to 2. If I see an A after that, then I have matched 3 characters and so on. Now last time we saw in the previous example that you could have a situation that after I see A, B, A, B, A and then I see a B here where I wanted to see a C, right. So here what will happen is I do A, B, A, B, A and now instead of proceeding forwards, I want to be able to compute that I have now seen a prefix of length 4. So I would like to say that if I have seen a prefix of length 5 which matches A, B, A, B, A and the next letter is a B and not a C, then I do not give up hope, right. I recognize that I have still seen A, B, A, B. So instead of seeing a length of 5, I have now seen a length of 4. So this is what we have to do technically. So we have to go from a position I, so any position in this graph. And if I read a letter A, then I must go to a new position which tells me how much of a match survives, right. And this is all within the pattern, right. So if the position matches, then I just go forward, right. If the position does not match, then I will look for the longest suffix that matches, right. So basically, I can do it by brute force. I can look at A, B, A, B, A, B and I can look at my text. A, B, A, B, A, C, right. And I can ask myself at this position, what is the longest prefix that matches? So I know that the longest prefix that matches has to be less than or equal to length 6 because that is the length of my pattern. So I can ask, does a pattern of length 6 match? So I can take 6 as my initial thing, right, and check. And then I will find that it does not match, right. Then I can ask whether a pattern of length 5 matches. So if a length 5 matches, I must start here. Again, it does not match because this A is equal to this B. Then I can ask whether a pattern of length 4 matches. So then I will start here. Then I can say, okay, this B matches, this A matches, this B matches, this A matches. And I can say yes, right. So I can exhaustively for every letter that I add, I can take the pattern which I have right now, look at the last M characters I have seen, right, and go through that and look for shorter and shorter 
suffixes. So I start with the longest possible suffix m and see if it matches the entire pattern. If it does not, then I start with m minus 1 and start from the second last position pattern and so on. Right? So this is a brute force calculation which will take me order m squared to add each edge because I have to try m different lengths and each of these things is going to take time proportional to m, m minus 1 and so on. So it is going to be the usual summation 1 to m. Right? So this is an expensive operation right now. We will see how to fix it. So I can add each of these edges explicitly. That's the but the point is I can build this graph. Okay. So building this graph is possible. So what does graph say? If I have matched up to i, and then I see a letter a, what have I matched up to? So in this graph, technically, if I take my sigma to be a b c, right? Then I should have letters from here for all an edge for every letter. So we have only drawn the letters for A and B except for this one because everywhere else if you think of a C, whenever I see a C, right, then the suffix ends in a C and the only prefix that ends in a C for my pattern was A, B, A, B, C. So there is no shorter prefix which ends in a C because remember I am taking the beginning of the pattern. So all C's will take me back to 0. Every time I see a C, so we have not drawn it just to avoid cluttering the graph, but every edge from here on a C will take me back. So this graph has to be complete in that sense. It has to say that for every position and for every letter, right? how do I go to a new position which marks the new prefix if I was at this prefix before. But the point is, as I said, this can be done by brute force, right? but you cannot ignore. So this graph has a few edges missing simply because it clutters up, but all those edges that are missing actually take you back to 0. So this graph, how do we use it? Well, this graph is something that is called a finite state automaton. So it's a special kind of graph. So we can interpret these numbers, these nodes as states. So it is a state in the sense that it tells us something about how much the computation has progressed. It's telling us that we are in a state in which the pattern up to some position j has matched. And the edges are what are called transitions. If I see one letter, I move from this state to another state. So an example of a state, example, if you take a lift for instance, right? so a lift has, is sitting with its door open. Now if the action is to press the door close button, then it goes to a state where the door is closed. Now if you press a floor number, it will go to a new state where it is on a different floor, then the door will open. So there are many states, so we go through these states and each state goes to the next state by some action happening. The door opens, you press a button and so on. So here the actions for us are reading a letter and the states are how much of the prefix is matched so far. Right? So that is the graph that we have constructed. Now how do we use this? Well, we process our word through this graph. So we run it in some sense on this automaton. So we start in this state which is our initial state. So initially we have seen nothing and therefore the prefix that we have seen is the empty prefix. So remember that 0 corresponds to the, the fact that I have seen up to but not including P0. So this is just the empty string. Right? So this is how much of the pattern I have seen so far. Now I read, a, an, so remember uh, the example was that I was reading A, B, A, B, A, B, A, C. So this was my text right? and my pattern was A, B, A, B, A, C. So when I read the first A in my text, right? I just follow this edge and I come here. So it is very simple. I just read the next letter of my text and follow the edge that the automaton tells me to follow. So I am now in state 1, I am now going to read a b because remember it is a b, a b, a b, a c, right? So we are, this is the string that I am processing, right? So a, I read a b, I am now here. Now I have, I have finished a and b, so I read an a and I go to 3. I read a b and I go to 4. I read an a and I go to 5. So up to this point, I have been following my pattern faithfully. Now if you remember, this is where my pattern did not match because I should have received, I should have liked to have seen a C, but I see a B instead. But now my automaton from here tells me that if you see a B, go to 4, right? So I go back to 4. Now I have got an A and a C to do, so I see the 5, then I see a 6 and I am done. So in this automaton, when I, at any point if I reach the end of my pattern, it means I successfully saw the full prefix of my pattern, so I actually matched it. So we have found a full match for P and notice that we were able to do this without going backwards and restarting our scan on the string. Right? So we just started from the beginning of the string and we just kept on going forwards and every time we saw a mismatch, the 
this automaton that we had pre-computed will tell us where we are with respect to the current state of the match. How much of the match can we assume we have done so far and just keep going. Right? So, that going back and restarting is subsumed by this memory that I have saying that, oh, now I have seen actually A, B, A, B. So, I can go forward. Okay? So, the single scan of our text suffices. So, to summarize, if we use this approach, where we are trying to remember some information about the matches, that memory we can store in this automaton, this special graph. Okay? And once we have built this graph, then we can scan our text in one pass and in order n time, we can find the match. Now, notice that what we said was that any time you reach the last state, you will stop and report success. Now, of course, you can then increment by one and restart this whole process by taking that suffix of your string starting from the match plus one. Right? So, it is not very difficult to adapt this approach to look for all matches, but right now this approach is easiest and least messy to describe if you are only talking about the first match. So, the first match can be found in order and time once you have the automaton, but the problem is computing the automaton. So, what we said was that every edge with brute force, we will look at the longest prefix, longest suffix, then the second longest suffix and so on to find out which is the largest suffix for which I have a prefix match. So, that itself took m squared time for each letter and each i. Right? So, I have to do it once for every letter and I have to do it once for every i. So, there I have to, so every i there are how many states are there? Well, there are m, m plus 1, so order m states and there are as many letters as there are in my alphabet. So, I have to multiply m squared by m to count for every state and by sigma to count for every letter. So, this actual computation of this automaton, if I do it the way we described it here in brute force, we are actually going to take a lot of time. It is going to take m cube times the size of the alphabet. So, what we are going to see is that this can actually be done in time proportional to the length of the pattern. So, in order m time and this is this clever algorithm due to Knuth, Morris and Pratt, which we will see next.